Well, hello, good evening and welcome. It is Thursday night. It's Thursday the 3rd of April, as ever was. We're in April. We're in April already, people. Um, and apparently it's spring, although Scotland is not yet aware of that. For as we travelled to Glasgow today, there were many signs that said, Are you ready for winter? That was what it said, all the way to Scotland, which was good. We liked that a lot. Because Sav and I are going to, we're going to go to a barn. Auburn, because it's closer than you think you do, Saf. <laughs> we'll not go there. No. This is this is this is VT Talk, and tonight I've got two very special guests on. It's a truly international show tonight. Um, in in the middle of the three monitors that we have tonight is a young chap by the name of Paddy Costell. Patrick Costell is his full name. Um, who is a director of Knowledge Action Change. The public face of which, shall we say, is one Jerry Stimson. But Jerry's not available tonight, so Paddy has come along in his stead because we're going to be talking about some rather important stuff. Now, before I even let him speak, I'm going to say this, and I'll, I know I'm going to be backed up here. Paddy is an amazing man. He makes things happen, he gets things done, and you have no idea how instrumental he has been over the last 18 months in us getting to the situation where we are today. And I think the situation where we are today is fine. How are you doing, Paddy? I'm very well, Dave. Thank you very much. It's all right, and, and thank you for joining us tonight. A pleasure. Good, good, good. A man of many words, Paddy is, as you can tell. He's good. He'd be worth listening to. There's some great information coming from Paddy. And we have another Patrick in tonight as well. This is Patrick Belzac. I hope I've pronounced that correct. Yeah, quite good. And um, Patrick is the EFVI coordinator for Poland, um, which is, well, you'll find out why it's important a little bit later on. But how are you doing, Patrick? And thank you for coming along. Well, I'm great, and uh, it is my pleasure to be with you guys. Uh, hello from Poland. There you go. Hello from Poland. Hello to you too. So, those are the two guests, but in the expanded cut house, for it is she, we have the one and only effervescent loveliness and bountiful beauty deliciousness that is the one and only Sav. Good evening, Sav. How are you doing? I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> I'm so tired. Has it been a long day? It's been a really long day. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit about the long day after the titles. It's all going to be good. So, hello, good evening, and welcome to VT Talk. <laughs> And we're back. Right. Now, it's been, I would say, an exciting couple of days. Um, Sav and I have been up to Glasgow, where today, Ash Scotland had its e-cigarette summit. And there's going to be an awful lot more information on that. I'm pleased to be able to say uh, that Sarah Jakes, Twiggled, if, if you know her that way, was up there representing Vapors. And she did an absolutely cracking job. Um, and that's not just me that's saying that, but we're hearing this from a lot of people that were there, including one Martin Dockrell. And the information we have, this is now confirmed, Martin has moved from Ash to Public Health England, and he is the Supreme Office for Tobacco Control in there. And you might think, well, what does that mean? Well, Paddy knows Martin, don't you? I do, I do indeed. And the fact of the matter is, we heard Martin today listening through doors because we had to use wine glasses and all kinds of things, getting on his hind legs and quite honestly he could have been anybody from the VTTV team. He was so supportive of e-cigs, as it has to be said was Linda Bold and, and we heard exactly the same from Deborah Arnott yesterday morning on Radio 5 Live. Uh, so Martin was there and Martin is full of praise 
uh, for Sarah. Sarah at the moment is in the air. She, she's probably landing now at, at some airport down south and will be driving back to Wessex. So we unfortunately we can't get her on tonight, but I'm going to try and get her onto the show next week and we'll get a full report of what went on. However, one of the, the things that did come out of all of this is that Martin Dockrell is organising, um, what did he call it? Summit type thing. It's a kind of a summit, an e -cig <laughs> summit, um, on May the 15th, and he's going to want some vapours to go along, and he's asked me to pull some vapours together for that. I haven't got the details yet, but as soon as I have, then will be going and and he's very very keen that public health england is very supportive of acigs and he wants to see them all over everywhere so that's all good um that's a very very quick pricey of what went on today um we're hearing in actual fact that people are picking up that what was happening in scotland was very positive although paddy i, I think you've got a bit more experience of, of uh, scotland and e-cigs than than i have certainly not being up there what's your take on everything i think that there's a very very great need to educate people in scotland about e-cigs i when we <clears throat> we held a conference there recently a, a city health conference in glasgow in december last year and it was our intention during that conference to hold a debate and a discussion about the merits and demerits of e-cigarettes during one of the, the lunchtime sessions. And what prevented us doing that was that some of the people there were very, very worried that during this discussion, some of the vapors might actually vape oh. and might upset the people from public health who would then not wish to attend the conference. And it all got very, very 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 stressful so we pulled the whole thing in the end because I think there was a need to go back to a much more basic approach and actually organize something like they organized today but I think what they organized today as your experience and Sav's experience shows was just so restrictive and I mean farcical in a way that you had to be singing the company song before you were actually allowed through the door and I, I, I just think Scotland is a place where there's a lot of work to be done. There needs to be some support for developing vaping organisations up there because there don't appear to be any strong voices at all. There's that one person that I've come across, is that, that one lady who, with her husband, runs the e-cig company and has had quite a lot of press in the Herald and a few other newspapers up there, you know, ha massively supporting the, the public health benefits of e-cigs. But other than that, there is very little. And public health is implacably opposed to e-cigs. The, the directors of public health in Scotland, who are very powerful because there are so few of them, it's not like the situation in England, they collectively wrote advice and signed the advice that went round to all of the... Um, smoking cessation services saying that e-cigs shouldn't be recommended. In fact, they shouldn't be discussed. And I think that it's a very, very a flawed strategy that they've got, and it needs some attention. And it, it mustn't be forgotten, in my view, in, the, in all of the attention that's being focused on Westminster and Europe at the moment, that Scotland does have its own governments. What sort of government that will be in 12 months' time? something to be, something that's at issue. But there needs to be some attention devoted there because there's, there's six million people in Scotland and a large number of them will be potentially or currently using e-cigarettes. Yes, I, I, I think you've, you've summed it up um, absolutely bang on. I mean, that, that's, that's my understanding. And I've got to say the same applies to Wales as we've, uh, as we've seen yesterday. Absolutely. Um, and that's just been really strange but um i was taken i mean i've got to say that that, that sav and i got back very late this evening and paddling like mad to try and get the show together and get it out um but managed to get i've managed to get a quick look at what's been going on and i've been quite i have to say taken by the level of public support for ecig users for vapors I'm seeing polls where 90% of the public are saying any ban would be silly. 
and and that's that's a fabulous situation to be in and long may it last have you you got anything on that Sav? i've got a couple of things coming in from chat Lorian has said ash scotland was very negative on twitter today jester has said can you please get public health england to sort out public health wheels then dave um <laughs> whip it up has said so it was today was an e6 summit without vapors fail Max Drum has said that's petty regarding Public Health Scotland. Um, Whip It Up's also said they sound too powerful. And the Morning Stars said, what an attitude, bury your head in the sand. Yes, it's, it's, it's a little unfortunate. But that said, that said, um, managed to bump into Sheila Duffy and uh, Jared Hastings and Linda Bald and all of them appeared to be quite pleased to see us up there even though there was no invitation to join the Murray Party and the Murray Throng. I had quite a conversation uh, with Martin Dockrell, and actually I think he kind of echoes what Jerry was saying, that, that the steps are slow and there are many to be taken, but we have to keep on plugging away. Um, and I think if Public Health England does take a lead on this, and he, he assures me they will, then yes, I think we, uh, we might actually get somewhere. Patrick, do, does this echo the situation in Poland? What, what's it? What's it like over there for E6? Well, I believe that uh, the thing that Paddy said uh, the same applies to the worldwide. I think um, we need support of any organizations in of vaping, about vaping, and uh, in Poland, actually, everything is against vapor. And we need to do a lot of things to to explain people that uh, that e six are not that bad and uh, to make things good. Indeed, indeed, yes, and and well, what 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 we'll be talking about later, the global forum on nicotine might go some way towards helping with that. Um, one of the uh, one of the things that struck me particularly uh, over the last two days was the document that was put out by the Royal College of Physicians, co-signed, incidentally, by Linda Bold herself. Now, those of you that were at the ASIC Summit last year uh, will remember that Linda was, I I'm going to say anti, very anti, in actual fact. Would you agree with that, Sav? And you would, yes. Paddy? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And yet, that document that she's co-signed with John Britton um, and Bogdanovich, uh, is incredibly supportive and finishes with that sentence that we should be encouraging and supporting the use of e-cigs because e-cigs save lives. I thought that was that was telling. Um, and from from what we can gather, from what we could hear through the door, and, and we'll get more information. That was the the stance that she was taking today. But that that Royal College of Physicians document is now gaining traction and is spreading around and I'm hearing as well that Cancer Research UK is going to be making a statement we think in May we think that will also be supportive although probably more cautious than what we're hearing so far and Ash's stance Ash UK their stance has been made perfectly plain in what Deborah Arnott said yesterday morning on Radio 5 Live now I'm sorry I can't bring you that um, we, we just haven't had time to pull it together, but I do know that links to all of that kind of stuff have been tweeted here, there and everywhere. And it's well worth a listen. I fell off my chair, I have to say, um, because this was a prediction that was that was made to me again by Martin Dockrell. And I think you were probably stood next to me when he did this, uh, Paddy. And he said, don't underestimate how much Deborah Arnott supports e -cigs. Yeah. You will be surprised. You were there, weren't you? I was there indeed, yes. And it looks as though yesterday was the prime opportunity for her to, to shrug off the mantle, if you like, um, and reply in extremely positive terms. And I thought it was absolutely fabulous. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm round of applause for Deborah Arnott for finally coming out and, and saying what she said. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's fabulous. I'm going to throw it across to chat again. As you've probably gathered, Sav and I have been flying about like paper kites and I'm, I'm interested to hear what chat's got to say because this time I've missed out on a lot and I kind of want to cover this before we go on to uh, the, the, the yeah. Polish thing that we're going to get to because that excites me greatly as well. And 
there's some new names being added to the list and you'll see why. So, Sav, what, what's chat got for us? Chat, there's a lot of talk about um, how amazed people are that it's actually even got into the Daily Mail and that they've done a 180 turnaround on it. Mm -hmm. And Lorian has just said, uh, finally, regarding Deborah Arnott, it's been well overdue that she spoke out. Well, yes, I mean, overdue indeed, but I, I think... Um, We've discussed this in, in, in all sorts of different places and at all sorts of different times. I think, to some degree, and this, this is by no means meant to be a, a defence, I think because of the stance that so many people in public health held a year ago, say, which was, in my view, quite anti, and I think you share that view as well, Paddy, um, it was very difficult for Deborah to go at it quite the way she went at it yesterday and be quite so um, stertorous, if you like, so 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 positive and, and vehement in her defensive of ACs as, as, as I felt she was yesterday. Even though Ash has been constantly saying, go to our website, look at our papers and it'll tell you our stance. And the stance has always been quite positive. The only real difference between where Ash was and where we were was this whole thing about Medregs. That seems to have gone away now. I think the shift is largely due to scientists suddenly discovering that they are scientists and dropping the ideology. I mean, there are obviously still a few poster, child, poster children for um, the ideological op opposition to e-cigs. Like, like the, the likes of Stan McChapman, you mean? The, the, the very same. Yes. Yeah. The gang of four. Yeah. But, I mean, basically, I think that their, their shift in the way that they're now prepared to talk and actually looking at the, the evidence as it is, is enabling people like Deborah to speak with some passion and authority because she's now got the support of the scientific community. There's less equivocation. People are actually saying safer not, and, and getting away from this whole thing about are they safe. They're getting into the safer language. They're getting into the switching language. They're dropping the quitting. It's, there's an interesting shift taking place, but if I, if I dare to paraphrase Churchill, I think we're at the end of the beginning rather than the beginning of the end, that, and I think we have to be very, very careful not to overstate where we've got to with all of this. I think it's still going to require a lot of hard yards to be put in, in, in terms of, of, of drum, drumming home the messages to get the hearts and minds on board. I mean, the Daily Mail is an interesting example because the Daily Mail, <laughs> a lot of people would say, runs the country. Um, once we've started getting support there, we've got to hold on to that support because the one thing with the press and, and any other media is they're very fickle. And what we need to do is keep feeding the positive stories. We keep needing, need to keep feeding the science in and actually keeping the pressure on so that politicians are going to actually have to listen eventually. That, uh, that all makes sound sense. Have you, this, this is one of the reasons I, I, I get so tuned into Paddy, you, you saying that, have you got any, any strategies that, that we as, as the common man, the vapor, any strategies we can adopt that will help with that? I think, I think one, one of the things I would encourage people to do, I have to say, I'm not a vapor, I'm just somebody who believes that the, this whole area is something which is such a potential public health gain at nil cost that it's just so, it's such an it would be such a crime not to actually take it. But I think there needs to be a stock take for all of the positions that people hold in different ways, because I think we need to adopt the the principle of my enemy's enemy is my friend. And whilst at the present moment there's a lot of debates between the vaping community and industry, I think they do need to be had, but there's a time and a place to have them, and I don't actually think that now is the time to be splitting the opposition to things like the implementation of the TPD and what that could mean, and also in the run-up to the um, the committee of the, the committee of the, the, the sorry the the COP six of yeah. the the uh, framework. Convention for Tobacco Control in Moscow, we need to have some simple messages about new nicotine products are not tobacco products. Let's take them out of all of these regulations that are dealing with tobacco. Let's, t let's treat them 
in a separate way. Let's treat them as as consumer products in most cases. They're not making claims to be health products, so they don't need to be medically regulated. But I think that there's 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 a tremendous capacity for self destruction within all of this if we're not careful. And I think we just need to be trying to trying to bring to bring everybody together who is actually in support of this at the present moment that would be a key strategy for me yes yes i i would agree with that i think it's 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 kind of although we seem to have won the skirmish and we seem to be winning hearts and minds at least locally yeah. um this whole framework convention on tobacco control is an entirely different thing and we touched on that um, last week and the week before, that the, the way that the, the World Health Organization, again, is working behind closed doors to effectively shaft vapors worldwide um, for what appears to be ideological reasons. And, and those are the kinds of reasons that we really can't stomach. And that, I think, is probably a good place to take a break because when we come back, there is an initiative going ahead. I've, I've punted it a couple of times. It's going to be happening in Warsaw. It's going to be happening in June. And the man that's organising it is sitting over there. And one of the guys that's hosting it is sitting over there. Poland, you see. It, it's, it's a, I love it when a plan comes together. It's all good. So we'll take the adverts. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And look at the bottom right-hand side. That, that right-hand side of your screen when you come back. And you might see a little logo that you're going to be seeing a lot of, I hope. Back in a couple of ticks. in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv And we're back live here on VT Talk on VaporTrails.tv with myself, Dave Dawn, Sav, as ever, Patrick Belzac in Poland, and Paddy Kostol uh, from Knowledge Action Change, um, who's... Are you in London at the minute? I am in leafy Wimbledon, Dave, yes. There you go, leafy Wimbledon. While while the adverts were on, we were talking about a little bit about what was going on um, with COP6. And which is the reason that I haven't put the little bug up in the bottom right-hand side, because Paddy's just made the point, that, that, and it had escaped me, I've got to be honest, that because of the political situation um, in Russia with the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, that the likelihood is that politicians won't go. You, you, you pick it up, Paddy. Is it distinct, there's a, there is a distinct possibility that governments will withdraw their politicians from the delegations to go to Moscow because of the sanctions that are being discussed at various levels because of the Russian annexation of the Crimea and the threats to the Ukraine. Um, 
which means that all of the delegations could potentially just be made up of officials. Now, although officials will be, um, they'll be mandated to say certain things and vote in certain ways, it does potentially remove the political accountability from the whole thing, which is a bit of a worry. Yes. I, I, there's not a lot we can do about that, I'm afraid, but it's just something to, ma to, to be mindful of. And it may be something that we might actually get a parliamentary question asked to ask whether the Secretary of State for Health will be, take, will be attending the COP6. That might not be a bad idea. But I it, it, think that's probably quite a good idea, just to see how the land lies. Yes, yes, very much so, very much so. Um, that sounds like a good one. But let's, let's look at what we need to do in order to fully educate people that are likely to be at COP6, the Conference of the Parties, uh, the Sixth Conference of the Parties. And that, I think, is where the Global Forum on Nicotine comes in, he said. And that, that's, it's my right, your left. But there's the logo. Uh, the Global Forum on Nicotine in Warsaw in 2014, in June. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand this over to Paddy first, because he's organised it. And, and Patrick, feel free to, to jump in whenever you want to on this, because this is on your home turf. How far are you from Warsaw, where you are, by the way? Uh, about 500 kilometres. OK, that's pr probably the same distance for me when I think about it, then. Um, so it's, a big, it's a big country, Dave. I, yeah. Okay, okay then, Paddy. Fill us in. What's happening? What's this all about? The background to this is that we wanted to try and get away from some of the, the more restrictive and um, specific types of events that take place around nicotine, tobacco, tobacco control, tobacco harm reduction. And what we wanted to do was actually organize something where we could gather together a wide range of people from different disciplines, different places, different points of view, scientists, consumers, academics, politicians, producers, distributors of products to look at the global state of nicotine, where we are with it today, what the, the issues are for it's continued, it, the continued use of things like e-cigarettes, um, what the likely political landscape is going to look like, what the science tells us, what consumers say about what, what they believe are good and bad products, what forms of standards, regulations, whatever, are needed. And we had a meeting with a number of people in in Warsaw. The reason, the reason initially for Warsaw is that Knowledge Action Change also has an office in Warsaw. Um, as most people will be aware, we also run the, the, the um, Nicotine Science and Policy website, and that's actually run from Warsaw by one of our colleagues. Warsaw is a strategic location. It's right in the centre of Europe. As Patrick said earlier, it has its own issues and very significant issues with the, um, the the political a atmosphere around e-cigs and their use at the present moment. So it actually could do some good to have the conference there from a Polish perspective. Although I'm sure Patrick would have something to say about that, and it would be it would be good to hear that. Um, what we've done is we've tried to put together. Jerry is at the present moment finalising the the actual program for the event. But I can run through, if it would be helpful, I can run through some of the speakers that we've already got um, announced, if that would help, Dave. Well, it, yes, it, it will, it will. But I, I would like to hear um, Patrick's take on, on the Global Forum on Nicotine being held in Warsaw. Is that going to help the situation that, that you currently find, Patrick? Well, I, I'd love to say that... Um the, the forum will be about the nicotine overall. I can speak only as a, from the paper side. Uh, I believe that this uh, forum will be the thing that it, I, I'd love to see it as a huge voice, as a voice of our scientists, as a voice of uh, papers, and uh, the voice that will be heard um, within politicians. And uh, there's uh, one thing that Paddy said, um, 
that uh, enemies of our enemies are our friends. Uh, in Poland, there is quite strange thing. I'm not sure how is it worldwide, but uh, the vendors should join us. And uh, I see that in Poland, the vendors, some of them, the biggest of them maybe, um, they are looking forward for implementation of TPD in, in Poland. They, they are preparing themselves somehow. They don't want to support EFBI. I don't know how. I hope that uh, we'll get some things solved over there on the forum. That's right. Okay. That, that's a strange situation that, that the vendors are... Yes, it is. I, I can't I can't quite understand why vendors would want to, to knuckle down to the TPD as it currently stands. Why aren't they objecting? I don't know. Maybe they are preparing to go back to Generation 1. They, they are making some supplies. I, I, I'm not sure how is it working and what's behind it because it is really, really strange thing. And um, yes, it is the way it is. Well, let's let's keep our fingers crossed then that the uh, the global forum on nicotine can can actually help some way towards this. It would certainly be useful. It sounds if uh, if vendors were to be there. So, who who have you got on the speakers list then, Paddy? Well, if I could just say at the, the, the outset, just like that the the the, um, the shape of the whole event to give people an idea. It's on Friday the twenty seventh of June and Saturday the twenty eighth of June. Um, and it's going to be held in the Marriott Hotel, which is right in the city centre. Um, the morning of Friday the 27th of June will be taken up with a series of satellite meetings and workshops. Um, which, and it will also include a media briefing, which will be delivered in English and in Polish. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try and get as many media outlets there as we possibly can to get some of the key messages out there so that people start getting interested in the event. Um, the kind of satellite meetings that are around things like setting standards for e-cigs, for e there'll be an EVON meeting, a uh, European Vapors United Network meeting, um, there'll be a science update and, 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 on, and a session on the latest things in research for people who are particularly keen on those kind of issues. And then the, the afternoon will be given over to the opening session with a, a keynote speech, the Mike Russell oration, which is obviously um, a memorial lecture that will be given in memory of one of the pioneers of nicotine research. And we're delighted that um, Peter Hayek has actually agreed to deliver that lecture. And in fact, Peter began his career in the UK working with Mike Russell, so it's actually quite a nice bit of symmetry there as well. Mm. And then we're going to have the first plenary will be a fresh look at alternatives to smoking and the, ca the case for reduced risk nicotine products. And we've lined up people in there such as um, Carl Lund from um, Norway, who I think it's Norway, who will look at uh, the Scandinavian experience with SNUS, Jack Cusack, who will look at e-cigs in Europe and, and, and talk about what, we, what I mentioned before, the consumer-led uh, health, public health revolution. We've also got Lynn Dawkins, who will look at nicotine delivery and behavioural aspects of smoking and vaping and what the key messages from her research on that might be. And then in the evening, there'll be a networking reception and buffet in, in, within the... The, uh, the area where the conference is taking place. And uh, I think it's worth mentioning that we're looking as well there, Dave, to try and put a special edition of VT talk, uh, yes. talk together for broadcast. The, uh, just, just, to, just to fill everybody in before Paddy goes on with that, we're looking at the possibility, and we're a long way down the road of getting this organised, of doing a live two-hour broadcast from Poland and, and, and OB and not on iPhones either um, where we'll be interviewing in ones and twos and threes the vast majority of the speakers that will be there and I've seen the speakers list as it was prior to the show prior to today and that excites me but there's there's some new additions to the speakers list and the, the attendees list isn't there? There is indeed I mean at the moment we've ha we have um, Deborah Arnott has agreed to take part in it. 
and we're looking at trying to get the two to, to get the authors from the um, the commentary piece on the Royal College of Physicians site, John Britt and Linda Bald particularly, to see if they'll come along. And you know that's that the invitations have been issued, um, and we'll see what comes of that. But we've also got. Um, we got Ricardo Pelosa and Constantinos Vasilinos, as you would expect we would have. So that's three days taken up then. And indeed, and 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 uh, anybody who upsets me will be chairing that session. <laughs> We've got. Uh, and ap apologies to Patrick for my pronunciation of these, but we've got Maciek Gonovitz, who's now based at the um, Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo, in New York, in uh, USA. But he's a, he's uh, somebody who studied and did most of his postdoctoral research at um, uh, Sosnovic in Poland, where he worked with another one of our speakers, Professor Andrzej Sobchak. Um, Jerry Stimson might say a few words, I'm sure. Who? That man, that man again. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got Hazel Mabe, who is from the European United Vapors Network and is very active in the um, European Free Vaping Initiative. We've also got Robert Mirozinski, who is one of the people who's found in the, who's founded the Polish Vapors Association. Cynthia... Um, Cabrera from the Smoke Free Alternative Trade Association in the US. Um, we've got our starry chemic, uh, Miroslav, Miroslav um, Dvorichak. That's the one. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we've got Dylan Human from Health Diplomats, who's very, has been key in actually make, preparing the ground for this conference. Dylan has done an awful lot of back. Back, back of the back of the scenes work with politicians on this. Um, we have a guy called Leon Kosmida, who's again he's from um, Sobchak's Institute of Occupational Medicine and Environmental Health, and he's he's somebody who's actually also going to be spending some time in the UK with us in the near future um, as part of a, a scholarship. We have, we we have Lou Ritter from the E-Liquid Manufacturing Standards Association in the US. We've got Carl Fagerstrom from Sweden. Um, Clive Bates. Never heard of him. Who's, who's, he? who's Clive Bates? He's, an, he's, another, he's another one of those people who create work for me. Um, we've got Rebecca Taylor, who at least for three days after the conference will still be an MEP. Um, <laughs> and... We have Lars Ramstrom from the Institute for Tobacco Studies in Sweden, and as I said, Deborah Arno. And we've also got Charlie Hamshaw Thomas from eLights, who's going to speak. And the sort of sessions we've got on the Saturday will look at overview of scientific evidence on safety, health, and addiction. Um, that's the one where we'll have Konstantinos and Ricardo, Carl Fagerstrom. Um, Maciek Gonovitz and Lars Ramstrom and then there'll be a series of um, parallel sessions around gaps in knowledge about nicotine and a new research agenda we're trying to get Jean-Francois Etter to help with that one um, what works and what doesn't work to help smokers stop inhaling smoke regulatory landscapes what, you know, what, what's an agenda for proportionate regulation of nicotine products and, and a range of other topics and then what we're going to finish on which is probably the key part of the conference is the regulation of combust non-combustible nicotine products national regional and international issues and that we hope will be where we can identify what we need to take forward into COP6. Sounds as though it's going to be I'm, I, want, I'm, I want to see action packed, but I don't mean action packed or feature packed. It's going to be an information packed couple of days, is that? Yeah. Um, because going through that list of names that you've just read out, there are some world renowned experts in the field involved in all of that. Um, Patrick, do, do, you, do you think there's much chance that uh, 
Polish vendors would, would turn out to this and actually learn something from it? Uh, yes, I believe that uh, the, some things will sort out. Uh, I think that uh, some of them will be at the GFN and uh, we'll meet there and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about the AVI support. And uh, I believe that uh, this is one of the most important things that uh, I, as a piper, I can do in, uh, at the GFN. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I honestly think it's going to be fabulous, and I'm really looking forward to going. Sorry, Paddy. So I think it's just worth saying as well that there will be a couple of sessions actually in Polish. Um, the cost of doing simultaneous translation is prohibitive for an event this size, but we're going to try and make sure that there are sessions that will be there for people for whom Polish obviously is a first language and English is difficult. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to we're trying to be as inclusive as we possibly can. Yes. All well, of the information's on the website. All of the things I've just said are, are, are on the website and available there. And that is gfn. Um, dot net. dot co. Dot net. Co. Right. Dot co. Dot net. I can't remember. It's dot net. Dot co. That's yeah. very it cool. just came. It just came on my mind. Um, I can help you with translating this website to Polish. We have people, we've actually got Polish staff working for us at the moment who are doing some translation. All right. Um, what I'll do, Patrick, is I'll put you in touch with my colleagues in Warsaw. Yeah. I'll, I'll email you and put you in touch with Jagosz and Joanna in Warsaw. All right. All right. Yeah, and then they can explain what's going on to you. Okay. See, this is this is international cooperation and happen here live in front of your very face. It's it's, it's fabulous. This, Sav, you look very very pensive. I assume uh, chat has chat to share. Chat always has chat to share. Um, I'll start with the one came in quite a while ago. It was from Happy Vape, and he says, "Paddy, does that mean that you will be establishing the difference between free base nicotine as regulated in the CLP and how people are confusing this chemical with what we actually use in our devices?" I'm not a scientist. I don't pretend to have the answer to that. But what I, I think what we are trying to do is we're trying to look at the principle that people smoke tobacco to get nicotine, but it's the tobacco that does them the harm. And what we want to do is we want to establish the nicotine as a recreational substance is no more harmful than other and in fact less harmful than a lot of other recreational substances such as alcohol. Okay. I don't know the answer to it, but I mean, I, I, I think what we're trying to be is we're trying to be as open as possible to the widest debate that we can have around the subject. I think that that, that would certainly answers it for me, I mean, because the, the, the potential is, is, uh, is there to... Um, to explore those things, the, sci the, the scientists, the real good scientists will be there um, and they, they'll know the answers to that. So I would imagine that that's likely to crop up and certainly um, we can fire that kind of question into the overall mix of people that are there. Back to you, Sav. Yeah, Weber Cape regarding the situation in Poland has said, um, if you were a company producing only Generation 1 stuff, you might well welcome the TPD. And I crit my pants and said, maybe Polish vendors, like others elsewhere, are hedging their bets. Yeah. Mm. And then moving on to um, GFN, Lena Maria said, Carl Lund is awesome. <laughs> Mitch Dog has said, awesome lineup, Paddy. Blaze has said, wow, looking forward to that. Liam D. Vapor has said, this all sounds great. Mark Hamburg has said, will there be a presentation summary of all the speakers on GFN, like the E6 Summit last year offered? Oh, that's an interesting point. Th right. So, presentations on the web? The, the whole of the, ma the main sessions, the plenary sessions of the event, will all be filmed. So all of the keynote speeches will be filmed and put on an archive site. All the presentations will be gathered from people and they will be put on the archive site as well. Uh, and any other information and documents that we receive as part of it will be put on the archive site. And then that will stay as part of the um, Global Forum on Nicotine site. That's going to be an absolutely fabulous resource. Yeah. 
Well, we've developed this over the years with a number of conferences. Jerry and I have worked on conferences for the last 10 years, and it's something that we try to do because one of the things that everybody complains about conferences is it's a bit like, you know, they're there today, they're gone tomorrow, and what we want to do is create legacy. Sounds fabulous. So, and also, what, what we've got with the cameramen that we've got, we'll dip in and out of the other sessions, and we'll also do some talking heads with people around some specific issues. So, again, it, it sounds fabulous. It, I, I'm so looking forward to this. Have we got more, Sav? Yes, um, there was something that's just come into chat regarding what Happy Vapen said, but there's no way my incredibly tired face is going to be able to get round all of that. Um, but I will copy paste it and I'll pass it on to you after the show. <laughs> and we can hopefully come back with answers to that maybe next week. Um, yeah, Lena Marie has also said, are the organisers going to get webcasts going off the speakers or is it being filmed? It's being filmed. We, we, I have to say that I, 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 grew up in this, I grew up in the 60s and I'm not really technically literate. And we're trying to develop this as we go along. I mean, we've got to the point now where we're filming things and we may, as Dave said before, we may well be able to try and do a, an outside broadcast of um, VT to the team talk. But in terms of um, wholesale streaming of it, it's very expensive and we're not at the point where we can actually do that yet. That is something that's on the agenda to develop for future years. Yes, and, 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 and I'm here to attest to how expensive it is and Sav can tell you that as well. Um, we'd be looking it's, at... It's exactly the same as the simultaneous translation. Um, you're talking about $100 per person to do simultaneous translation, roughly. Yeah. So it's a lot of money. Um, and we will try and incorporate that in future events, but it depends on where we can actually source that from. Indeed, indeed. Um, we need to take a quick ad break, so... Go I've got one more question, and then I'm done for now. Okay. So we'll We'll grab that. Um, Mark Hamburger said, are health organisations from Poland or other countries also invited? Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, Excellent. we're inviting we're 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 inviting anybody and any uh, everybody and anybody we can think of. We've actually got somebody who's trying to source the the various contacts in all of the European health ministries so that we can write to them. Um, we, we we're, we're casting the net very very wide for this. Daft daft question. Just before we do go to the break, Paddy. I mean, how many people can can the venue cater for? 350 comfortably. That's not a bad number. In fact, that's uh, an excellent number, especially if they're all decision makers. It would be a very good number to get there because that gives it the kind of critical mass that we can then take forward to the discussions that are going to take place around the implementation of the CPD and also what's going to happen with ENDS at the uh, COP6 in October in Moscow. Absolutely, yes. Right, we need to take a quick break because if I don't, I'll get my knuckles wrapped. And when we come back, we'll kind of close it all off and, and we may, Sav and I may talk about Auburn because it's closer than you think. Isn't it, Sav? It is, yes. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
And welcome back to part three of VT Talk here on the 3rd of April with myself, Dave Dawn, the effervescent loveliness and bountiful beauty liciousness that is the one and only self, Paddy Costall and Patrick Belzac in Poland. Now, Patrick, come on, tell us what's actually happening in Poland. You know, there's, there's got to be an upside to all of this. Um, yes, there is a bright side of uh, Polish actions. Uh, actually, in Poland, there is uh, over one million papers which is a huge number, and um, there is some vendors, I may say, a lot of them, about 20, 30 of them, and most of them are online in the shops. There are a few people from the forums that are helping us. One of them uh, has prepared the action to print the leaflet, and uh, I've got one of them. This is really beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. Oh, that's nicely put together, yes. Yeah. And um, basically it says we don't want to go underground to support uh, EFVI. And uh, here's a Polish domain. It's a quite good idea, EFVI.pl. And uh, it directs you uh, straight to the sign uh, page. And uh, we've printed 100,000 of them. So it's a quite huge number. And uh, one of the vendors uh, said that he can give 20,000 of them for free to other vendors. And uh, there's a lot of people involved in that, and there's uh, a lot of vapors involved in the FBI. And um, actually, it don't go uh, with the numbers. Our numbers are quite uh, embarrassing, but we've got uh, some ideas uh, how to solve it, how to fix it. And uh, here's a one vendor who uh, who's selling E6, and uh, it's um, I'm not sure sister company uh, has a call center, and they've declared. That they can create a call center, small call center uh, of two persons, of two people, and they will call to people and ask them to, to sign EFBI and to join us and to help us. Anyway, I think it's a really brilliant stuff. Is that so? So that the, there are going to be people sat in an outgoing call center ringing around members of the public asking them to sign up? Yes, indeed. And um, I think that they want. It's straight to the vapors. They will try to make non-vapors support us, and I believe I believe that they will succeed. That's fabulous. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. Do yeah. we know anybody with they the? They are doing it for free, of course. That's even better. That that's, that makes it super fantabulous and fun, dabby dozy and other made-up words. Do we know anybody with a call centre, Paddy? Uh, no. Oh well, <laughs> we can try. We might be able to get somebody, if there's anybody out there with a call centre that fancies doing that. I do think that's something that would be worth discussing as part of the the Evon meeting to see whether other people can... Because these are sort of ideas that need to be thrown out in those kind of meetings and people then need to try and run with it. Yes, yes indeed. I mean, it's not too far away, isn't June, but it's not too long from June before we get to November. No, um, and that's that's got to be done. Sorry, Patrick, you were going to say something. Um, no. Oh, my mistake. I thought I heard something come through my earphones, but it might just have been me. Or is it you, Sav? Have you got something from chat? It could have been me. Chat found that amazing. Chat says that's amazing. It's it's absolutely incredible. Isn't it though? Yeah. I mean that that is. I've got to say that is definitely without a shadow of a doubt. Fun dabby dozy. I love that idea. I think that's great. And, and, and I'll put the play out again if anybody knows anybody with a call centre. And I don't care whether it's in England, France. I mean, India will do. Um, if you've got one and you fancy giving us a couple of operators for a couple of weekends for free and for nothing, I think, yes, please, hands out, do that. That would be, that's fabulous. So congratulations on that one, uh, Patrick. I think that's, uh, that's, that's fabulous. Absolutely brilliant. We've got five minutes to go towards the end. And Sav has just put her hand up. Yes, you right. may go to the toilet. <laughs> I've got a question that came in ages and ages and ages ago. Okay. And I promised, um, it's from Paul XB, and I promised I would ask it before the end of the show. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll jump in now before we, we get to the roundup. And he said, a question for Dave. If we come away from the EU, would fighting the likes of the MHRA or whoever it would be in the UK be easier than fighting in Europe? Oh, that's thanks for an easy question. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, would it be easier than fighting in Europe? Uh, I think that there are many people that think because we understand 
in the UK, we understand the UK system rather better than we do the, the, the machinations of the, of the European Parliament, which appears to be extremely Machiavellian and, and way more complicated than it needs to be. Mm. And because we're speaking to elected representatives in their native tongue and in our native tongue, then yes, the, uh, the logistics, if you like, of actually speaking to people would probably be easier. And certainly now, certainly now, because of the, uh, the sea change that we've seen just over the last two days, it's all bubbled up to the surface and the level of public support we've got. I think that would, that would lend itself marvellously towards an engagement that, that, that's, that's actually going to be worth having. Um, and that's, that, that would be brilliant, that would be all well and good. The, but the, the thing that's niggling in the back of my mind is that over the last year or so, we've developed contacts with the likes of Jacques Louezek and the French uh, organisations, ADUS. We've got contacts with, with friends now in Poland, in Germany, uh, in Spain, in Italy, in Greece. And it's become, I think, a fight that I think it, it would be better if we could win it together as a, as a group, as an international group. And teaming up with our American friends, our Canadian friends, um, Australians, that worldwide, you know, as vapors, we end up with a much, much bigger voice, millions upon millions of us out there worldwide making our voices heard and and actually that's got to resonate with the people that are at cop6 the framework convention on tobacco control because it would be all well and good us winning this far fa fabulous victory in the uk but if that doesn't translate into every other country eventually what happens in every other country bans and everything like that would come down on our heads that's not a, a um, a stance I would have taken three, four, five years ago, I'll freely admit. But over the last year, 15, 18 months, my eyes have been opened to a very, very large degree by the cooperation that we're seeing between all of these different countries. And, and that, I have to say, I think it's fabulous. I think it strengthens us. I think it strengthens our cause. And I think it, it, it gives governments pause for thought because the more successful we are as a major group, then that just has to spread worldwide. What's your take on that, Paddy? Because I saw you were nodding in the background. I think, I think uh, even a more, a, a more basic point than that is people travel and whatever's good for what goes on in England and Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland needs to be what's good for what goes on elsewhere. Because mm. otherwise you've got, a, you know, it's kind of a, it, 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 as you say, everything happens here which is fine and then you go abroad and then everything changes. And you're right to say that, you know, once you become isolated, you're, you're very much more vulnerable. Yeah, it would be a lot easier to pick off. If, if we were isolated and on, a, on our Todd. I mean, that's, that's not to say that I'm a big fan of staying in Europe, because I'm not sure I am. But certainly in terms of, of vaping yeah. and the vaping cause, I think we have more safety, if you like, in greater numbers. And the more there are of us, yeah. the better able we are to fight. Um, Yes, not an easy question to answer, but on, on balance, while it might be easier to do that, I still do think that we've got, to, we've got to really pull together and make it a worldwide, global attack on the idiocy that comes out of the ideological and uh, almost paranoid thinking of certain people, well, four, maybe five. Anything more, Sav? No. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm, I'm going to pull it round because I did say I'd try and keep it to time and I'm already 22 seconds over, he said, right. looking at the studio clock. Um, I'm going to say this, it, it's, been, it's been an emotional couple of days um, from Wales, the government in Wales, proposing something preposterous and bloody stupid and then being shouted down all over the media and shouted down by the great British and Welsh and Irish and Scottish public 
with with almost one voice, 90% support for ASIG users, then all of the good stuff that's been coming out and all of the good optimistic stuff that we're seeing in the media, it's been a, a couple of days of very, very mixed emotions and it's going to take me a little while to recover from that. But I'm hoping to recover all the faster for being in the company of like-minded people at the knees meet at the new Crown Inn in South Shields on Saturday from 12 o'clock. I am so looking forward to that. I'm so looking forward to meeting loads and loads of people I've never met before. It's going to be a fabulous day. I really can't wait for it. And with that, I'm going to give it over to Sav for the last word from chat. You're not escaping that one, kiddo. Um, and and then we'll say bye bye, Sav. Well, I'm actually going to say chat tonight. You've gone. I made my... Oh, me? No, it's me that's gone. I'm still here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't confuse me. Carry on. Okay. Chat, I've made my life very, very simple tonight. Um, and it wasn't their intention because they knew I was tired and they wanted to harass me. But they've made it so simple tonight because they have sat absolutely glued to every word that has been said on tonight's show. And they are they have just been so good. So my last word tonight goes to chat for making my life so much easier tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> was that schmooze? Oh, it could have been. Because I was accused of being a schmooze last night. Don't ask. Sure. Yeah. Me? Sure. Hey. Yeah. Never going to happen, is it? If you want to know the full story, you'll have to come on Saturday because I don't broadcast it. Um, I imagine. You, I'm just, no, you're not. I'm not going to go there. Uh, I need to say big thank yous to Patrick Belzac for, for joining us from Poland. It's our first Polish guest uh, from Poland, actually in Poland on the show. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person in June. I hope we shall. And I'm looking forward to it. It was my pleasure to be with you guys today. No, it's it, really, thank you. Thank you so much. And to Paddy Kostol, who I'll, I'll say you've been an inspiration to me for the last God knows how long, Bonnie lad. You need to get out more, Dave. Yeah, you're probably right, but even so, I'm still going to say it, you are. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Paddy. It's been a pleasure. A pleasure to speak to Patrick as well. Indeed so, yes. And as, as per usual, to, to my right-hand woman in the world of vaping and e cigs to Sav, who's... I mean, thank you so much for nearly clocking that woman last night for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah was better than me. Yeah, if you want to know more about that, you'll have to see us on Saturday. Um, yeah. But the, the biggest thanks of all, obviously, go to you, our audience. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget, until we see you next time, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. Till we see you next time from all of us here. Good night, take care of yourselves, and be lucky. See you Saturday. Bye. <laughs>